it will be available in the Microsoft Teams lecture for a later viewing. OK, all right. So today uh, we shall move on with uh, operational amplifier or the OPM. OK, and uh, next week there will be an invited speaker. Uh, we'll be talking on operational amplifier application uh, from National Instrument. So this week I will explain to you all regarding the uh, basics of OPAMS. Okay, so what is actually OPAM? When you see, when you mention about OPAM, what sh should uh, appear in your head is a schematic symbol of a triangle with two inputs and one output. So there is always OPAM is always represented as a triangle, a negative and positive input with one output. So the functionality of an op-amp is to change the voltage amplitude and also sometimes it change the polarity of the inputs. Depending on how you connect the op-amp circuit, uh, it will uh, influence the output characteristics. Okay. And an op-amp is actually an integrated circuit. The characteristics of op-amp, it has high gain, very high gain with the symbol uh, infinity here. Infinity means very large gain. And also, it should have high input impedance, infinity. However, at the output side, the impedance is low because we will have Mm, the ideal characteristics of an op-amp uh, RO should be zero. But in real situation, you will never get zero, out, zero uh, output impedance. There will be some small few ohms of uh, resistance. The applications of op-amp, uh, it can be used as an oscillator, a filter, regulator, comparator, and many more applications of the uh, of PAM circuit. So if you look at the internal of the op -amp, it is actually composed of many transistors inside the op -amp. So here, for example, uh, a schematic diagram of a 741 op -amp. 741 op -amp is among the uh, early uh, operational amplifier circuits. Now, nowadays, there are many, many op-amp circuits. 741 is among the, the early op-amps, and 741 use transistors uh, of type uh, BJT. So you can see here, uh, from here, you will have the non-inverting input, and uh, the other input is the inverting input. There are two uh, transistors Q1 and Q2, uh, which gives you the uh, negative and positive input. And then you have Q3. All together, actually, there are 17 up to uh, Q7, uh, Q17. So you have all these uh, transistors within the op-amp make up uh, a, a, a small open and because of transistors technology you can make the transistor very small uh, because transistors are simply uh, pn junctions so when you have a, a, a mini uh, patches of pn junction within the uh, integrated circuits you can compose the open uh, still an open is also is still small but within the op-amp itself, there are many transistors within it, and also internal resistors of each each transistors are connected to the many resistors within it. And the output is measured uh, on the right side, and you will have a biasing voltage V plus and V minus. So this is the internal, or we call it. Uh, schematic diagram of an op-amp 741. 
So, so despite of these many transistors within the op-amp, uh, we can disregard all the internal transistors. We can simply uh, connect the op-amp uh, with an external resistors uh, at the input side and uh, feed, feedback the resistors from the output to the input. It will uh, you make you can make it simply uh, uh, easy for you to amplify because of the many transistors within the uh, op-amp circuit. You can control the gain of the amplifier. Okay, so despite of the many, you can just consider uh, v, v, v in, uh, the V plus and V minus, and all, then you can measure at the output. Okay, so in terms of, uh, because an op most of the time in the manufactured uh, appearance, it is a four leg IC circuit. Uh, four legs, uh, four at uh, one side, and another four legs at the other side. So each of the legs of the op-amp is numbered, and for for a seven for one op-amp, leg number one is offset null, meaning that it's not connected, and leg number five is also offset null. So it is just hang. So you that uh, from this eight actually you are just using six of the legs. So the leg number two is inverting input. Leg number three is uh, non-inverting because we use sign negative as uh, inverting plus sign as non-inverting. And leg number four, the bias voltage. Bias voltage means uh, the amount of voltage that you need to uh, make the op-amp working, okay? And uh, an op-amp is actually an active circuit, which means you require bias voltage in order to make the transistors working, transistors within the circuit is working, okay? Uh, and then leg numbers, Seven, uh, number five offset, leg number six is the output where you measure the output at leg number six and leg number seven is the biasing uh, V plus voltage. Okay, in terms of uh, schematic diagram, you use symbol uh, triangle. So when you want to connect, you should know the negative uh, input uh, should be leg number two lah, and positive input should be leg number three. And the biasing plus uh, minus voltage uh, should be leg number seven and four respectively. So leg number uh, one, five and eight is, uh, eight and C means not connected. Offset null most of the time is not connected also. So only five points to be connected on the uh, op-amp circuit. Okay, okay. Now we, let's consider how we can utilize this op-amp. So an op-amp can be working in a single-ended input. Single-ended means uh, an op-amp can take two inputs, V1 and V2, or V1, depending on whether you connect V1 as at the non-inverting or the inverting one. If we connect one of the uh, in, uh, input leg to ground, so in this example, you connect VI at the inverting, uh, at the non-inverting input. The inverting input, the negative side is connected to ground, so that means you only use one uh, one one output, uh, one input only. So it is. This is called single ended input because you only apply V in to the uh, inverting input, whereas the non inverting input is not uh, is zero because you connect to ground. Ground means zero lah. And 
for this connection, uh, if your input is uh, sinusoidal voltage with positive phase first, then negative phase, the output will be having the same phase. So that you start off with positive cycle, then negative cycle. The only difference is the amplitude of the voltage at the output will be different lah, depending on the amplification factor of the op-amp. Okay, this signal is amplified with the same polarity as the input signal. Uh, if um, uh, you can control uh, whether the output to be of the same phase or not, or having same polarity or different polarity by changing the uh, input manners of the op-amp. Okay. If you ground the uh, non-inverting input, you apply your inputs in at the inverting input terminal and your input signal has, starts with positive and then negative cycle. The output for this connection will be out of phase where you have positive phase in the input, the output will have a reverse phase. So the polarity is 180 degrees uh, different. Okay, uh, and amplify output with the op opposite polarity as the input signal. When the input phase is negative cycle, the output will be um, positive cycle. So it is opposite to the input. So we call it as having opposite polarity. So this is behavior of single and the input. Okay. And how uh, to calculate for the gain? Because despite of the many transistors within the op-amp, we can just consider uh, the input and output and also the uh, external resistors connected to the uh, IC op-amp. Okay, so let's consider a single and the input of uh, the in applied to the non-inverting uh, input terminal. So V out, actually here when you have, this one is grounded, so you can imagine the current will pass from V in and then amplify and you will see the output at the VO terminal. Okay, and this amplifier will have a gain of AO. Okay, we, we call uh, the amplifier having a gain of AO. So, the output of this connection will be having the input times the gain, where the input is the difference between the inverting and the non-inverting input. Here, we will have V plus minus V minus. Okay, and V plus is having V in, V minus is zero. So you will have the output will then become AO times V in. Okay, so therefore your gain of this uh, amplifier will be uh, VO over V in, which is AO. So this amplifier will have and uh, amplification factor of a value of AO. All right. Okay, now let's change position of the uh, input. So you connect inputs to the uh, inverting uh, input, the negative um, leg, and you will have your V out is actually the AO times the difference between this, which is uh, always V plus minus V minus, and you will have AO times because the non-inverting input is zero, so you will have zero minus V in. So you have to, you will have a negative sign in front of the uh, uh, output. So you will have negative AO, times V in. Okay, and therefore 
for uh, an input of for a situation where the input is applied to the inverting input terminal, the gain will be negative A O. Okay. And okay, now consider common mode operation. Common mode means the inverting and the non-inverting uh, input terminals have a common value of input. So that means you shot V plus and V minus. So you apply one voltage. So you will have a common input. So like for example, if you apply uh, two millivolt here, at the V minus, you will have two millivolt. At the V plus, also two millivolts. So the difference between them are zero. Lah. Okay. And these values will give the amount of VO. Okay. The common mode operation must have same input signals at both input terminals. Both of the input signals are equally amplified, but they are in opposite polarity. Because we, if we consider single input terminal, a single input operation just now, uh, when you apply input at the uh, inverting, you will have a negative gain. But if you apply at the non-inverting input terminal, you have a uh, non-negative gain. So now you will have to combine when you have a common mode operation. These signals cancels out, making the output equal to zero. However, in practice, uh, you will never get zero output, even though you have a common mode operation. You will have some amount of VO, uh, and that VO is called common mode uh, gain. Okay. Uh, differential and common mode operation. For an op-amp with arbitrary input voltage, V1 and V2, differential input signal uh, will be the difference between V1 and V2 at the input terminals, whereas the common input signal will be the average uh, of the inputs at the inverting and non-inverting inputs. So you will have a VC is equal to V1 plus V2 divided by 2. This is actually average value for the common input signals. But the differential will be the difference between the two input terminals. So there are two uh, values that you have to consider in the calculation, which is the uh, V differential and also V common, v common mode. The output of the op-amp, VO, is actually uh, the total gain due to the differential and due to the common mode. Okay, so you will have VO is equals to AD is a uh, gain due to the differential uh, inputs times the V differential plus gain A due to the common mode operation multiplied by the V common mode. Where V common mode is average value, VD is uh, differential values. Okay. The common mode rejection ratio, CMRR, is actually the ratio of the differential gain uh, to the uh, common gain. And the CMRR is always uh, uh, a magnitude value. If you have differential gain is negative, uh, so the CMRR should be a positive value. You just take the magnitude. And common mode rejection ratio, most of the time, are uh, uh, referred as a logarithmic value, where we refer it as uh, 20 log uh, 10. This is in units of dB, actually. 20 log 10 of the differential gain divided with the common mode gain. Okay. The common mode rejection ratio, okay, continuation. The output voltage of the op-amp, is 
VO equals to AD times VD plus AC times VC. Uh, but uh, if you rearrange this equation, you will get bring out the ADVD outside. So you will get 1 plus AC times VC divided with AD over VD. And if you notice AD, uh, sorry, AC VC over ADVD, this is actually 1 over CMRR times VC over uh, VD because uh, CMRR is actually AD over v AC. So this is a, will give you 1 over CMRR. And when the CMRR is large, okay, something over large value, it becomes uh, almost zero, right? Uh, the output voltage will be influenced mostly by the differential signal only. Okay, because when this is zero, so the total uh, gain and uh, the total output VO is then becomes AD times VD times one. So this one over CMRR will be negligible. Okay, while the effect of the common mode component is greatly reduced. Because why we need to consider large CMRR? Because the characteristics of an op-amp is uh, it, most of the time an op-amp has high common mode rejection ratio. Okay, an op-amp has input voltage, uh, very small, VI equals to around 150 uh, micro uh, volt, and VI, uh, this is an example actually, if you have uh, you, if you apply uh, 150 micro volts to an input terminal and another input terminal of the op-amp is 140 micro volts, that means you have a voltage differential value of 150 minus 140, which is 10 micro volts. The differential gain of the amplifier is 4,000 with a 10 micro volt. 10, um, 10 micro volt means 10 to the power of negative 6 again. And a gain of uh, 4000, you can compare the output voltage with the component of differential input signals when the CMRR of the op-amp is 110 to the power of 5. During uh, CMRR of a value of 100, and during 10 to the power of 5, which means 10,000, you will have the CMRR indicates the op-amp's ability to reject a signal applied simultaneously to both inputs. And higher a CMRR will produce better op-amp. And typically CMRR is around 80 to about 120 dB. And CMRR decreases with uh, when frequency increases. Because uh, we have uh, in daily use, we often uh, encounter high frequency signals. So uh, the use of op-amps uh, with very high frequency CMR will, will suffer to drop. Okay, AC equivalent of an op-amp circuit. Okay, because we have input terminals of the uh, op-amp is uh, V plus and V minus, there will always be VD, which is V differential. And we can represent the op-amp as the, at the input side is VD and at the output side with VO. So this will be the uh, op-amp circuit. Lah. So we, you will have ADVD uh, and uh, Practically, uh, it, it has a, a separate, whereas an ideal situation, uh, the differential is almost continuous. But in practical, you will have some values of Ri, Ri and some values of Ro. However, in ideal situation, uh, 
there is no RO because RO is considered very small, zero values. Okay. And because in the ideal situation, it, it, it discontinuous, so the input impedance will be very large, whereas at the output side, the impedance will be very small. That is for the ideal situation. So the input signal applied between the input terminals uh, sees an input impedance of RI typically very high. The output voltage is shown to be the amplifier gain times the input signal taken through the output impedance RO, which is typically very low. An ideal op amp circuit would have infinite input impedance, zero output impedance and infinite voltage gain okay although it is uh, infinite gain for an ideal situation but in practical situation the gain is around 10 to the power of 5 to 10 to the power of 6 only you can never get a, a infinity uh, gain okay so when talking about op-amp gain uh, open loop uh, we can consider the situation of open loop gain and closed loop gain. So during an open loop, uh, open loop means there is no feedback from output to input. So the configuration where there is no feedback from the output back to the input, in the open loop configuration, the gain can exceed 10,000 uh, gain. For the closed loop, the configuration will reduce the gain uh, in order to control the gain of the op-amp. Uh, it must have a feedback because we can, uh, we do not want to have infinity gain because it's difficult to handle. So to best uh, use the op-amp, we most of the time use a feedback uh, connection where the feedback is always connected to a resistor. This is to control the gain of the op-amp. Okay, and this feedback, most of the time, it can be uh, negative feedback. A negative feedback reduces the gain and improves many characteristics of the op-amp. Okay, how to use an op-amp? We would like op-amp to amplify input signal by a factor of any arbitrary value. However, the open loop gain is fixed and too large. So we need to make the amplification system as closed loop using some external circuits. There are two configurations of using the external circuits, uh, making the amplifier to be working in non-inverting or making it working in the inverting manner. So we will look at one at a time. Let's look at the inverting configuration, uh, inverting closed loop configuration. So we, we, we when you uh, see the word inverting, the uh, input must be applied to the negative input terminal. So here we have V1 is applied to the V negative, Whereas the V plus, the non-inverting input terminal is grounded. You do not apply any signal here. You just ground it and the input will be applied to the inverting terminal and we introduce a feedback resistor from the input to the output. Okay. And when this happens, you will have an op-amp AC equivalent circuit of uh, something like this where you will have the internal RO, RI and V plus uh, the non-inverting input will be simply grounded. Okay, and okay. then you will have uh, the gain open loop uh, AOL which is uh, open loop gain for the op-amp, you will have RI, which is the input impedance, and RO, the output impedance. So your VO here, 
is actually the gain of the open loop times the V in. Okay. Uh, since uh, AOL is large, uh, we will have VI is equals to VO over A times OL, and this one is equals to zero, where um, A open loop is simply VO over V in. Ideal situation should be zero. Uh, the output will be zero. But then, uh, oh, then we will have also uh, the input is always the difference between the non-inverting and the in inverting input terminals because vi is always v plus minus v minus because v plus is grounded therefore we will have uh, v plus is equals to v minus which is also equal to zero because uh, although we apply uh, input to the uh, inverting terminals and the rules of an op amp v plus must be the same as v minus but because v plus is connected to ground v minus should be zero also so that means uh, voltage drop voltage applied v1 uh, it will not enter this v uh, so current will pass through the ri and rf and then you will see output at the vo okay and it means that v is also grounded so this this concept is called the virtual ground so you will see uh, a virtual ground in the connection okay uh, so now using a uh, kcl v1 minus v uh, input v, vi divided with r1 because we have voltage drop here plus voltage drop here uh, must be equals to the difference between uh, vi minus vo times this the difference between this rf Okay, and because VI is zero, so you will have V1 over R1 is equals to negative VO over RF. And if you rearrange, okay, bring VO uh, to one side because we want to obtain an equation of gain. VO over V1 is actually equals to negative RF over R1. So VO over V1 is the gain AV is actually negative RF over R1. So in this case, we, we will get uh, the output will be a negative value or out of phase value. So the circuit will provide a voltage gain with an 180 degrees out of phase or 180 degrees phase inversion from the input signal. Okay, you can also use superposition theorem to derive the voltage gain uh, as explained in the textbook. So here, uh, the, the moral of the story, when you connect um, V1 uh, to the negative input terminal and which is uh, the inverting uh, operation, you will get AV is equal to negative RF over R1. So the gain is simply the value of R, ratio of RF to R1. Okay, so if you put uh, 10 millivolts, uh, your R1 is, say for example, RF is uh, 10K, this is 1K, so your gain will be 10, 10K over uh, 1 is 10. And the gain, uh, the gain simply determined by the resistors connected to the uh, op-amp only. Okay, so the golden rules of using an op-amp, you must remember that 
two two factors, uh, two facts, factuals. Uh, number one, voltage difference between the inputs must always be zero. Okay, so when you connect ground to the V plus, so V minus should be zero because there will be a different, uh, uh, no difference. You must have, you must keep common mode. Okay. The inputs also draws no current. So meaning that uh, the current do not enter. So we call it as if it does not enter, but in reality, there's something going on within the op-amp itself. Lah. But for simplicity, we can consider the inputs draw no currents uh, because it sort of bypass, it, uh, it only pass through the external uh, resistors of the connection. Okay, so now we move to applications, um, common application of op-amp circuits. We can make the op-amp as an inverting amplifier. We can make it an non-inverting amplifier, we can make it a summing amplifier, unity follower, integrator or differentiator. We can also make it as a comparator. It's not listed here. Okay, so for the inverting amplifier, okay, um, connection must be input to the V negative lah because it's inverting amplifier. And we connect R1 and RF most of the time we use uh, uh, feedback. What is the purpose of having the feedback resistor? To control the gain. So that the gain of the amplifier is exactly as what you want. Without a feedback resistor, the gain can be infinity. So you cannot control the gain. So that's why you must use a feedback uh, connection to in order to obtain uh, exactly what you want. Okay, so here you apply V1, uh, you have R1 and RF, VO is equals to negative RF over R1 times V1. So the input signal is at the inverting negative input terminal. The non-inverting plus sign input terminal is grounded. The feedback resistor RF is place between the output and the inverting input. So here, for example, if you apply V in this amount of uh, AC signals, so if you use, uh, for example, R1 is 1K, and RF you use two values. RF is 30, 33K, so, 33 divided by 1K, you will produce a 33 value. So the amplification will be 33 times this input. But if you change the RF, so let's say you use 75K, but R1 you maintain the same value of 1K. So 75K divided by 1K, now you get a 75 uh, value of the gain. So you will see the gain, the amplitude of the output when you change to a 75K RF will, will produce a larger output. Okay, 75 divided by 1K, you will get 75 amplification vector. That is an example of inverting. Uh, but the, the manner of the output, it will be out of phase because here input is positive phase, output will be negative phase. Okay. Uh, the amplitude depends on the gain. The phase will be out of phase, which is 180 degrees out of phase. Huh? Because for a full cycle, there will be 360 N. So because it is only half of the cycle is out of phase, so half of 360 would be 180 degrees out of phase. Okay. Uh, now we move on to non-inverting amplifier. 
So when we see non-inverting, now you apply uh, the input to the positive input terminal. Okay, but uh, the feedback resistor must be connected to the uh, B negative, and R1 is also connected here. So in this case, you will see uh, VI is zero here, and you will have R1. Kelas, kelas. Tengok enggak? Okey. Okey, and then, uh, okey. So, here we will see V1 is connected to the non-inverting. Uh, connect. V1 is connected to the plus sign. Non-inverting lah. And... So to calculate for the output, we consider V1 is actually a voltage divider. Okay, from this point, V1 is equals to R1 over R1 plus RF times VO because we can measure from here uh, because of the fact that at this point, it should reflect the value. V1 is the value at this point, which is actually uh, R1 over R1 plus RF times VO. Okay, and if you rearrange this, we want to find VO over V1, which is the gain. So you bring VO to the other side, that will give you, uh, after rearranging, VO over V1 is actually R1 plus RF over R1. And if you rearrange, you will see uh, R1 over R1 is equals to 1 plus RF over R1. So therefore, the gain for non-inverting amplifier would be 1 plus RF over R1. So for a non-inverting amplifier, it is always having a 1 plus the ratio of the feedback resistor to the uh, uh, resistor connected to the input. But because of uh, gain is almost a uh, few thousand. So a few thousand like 1,000 plus one becomes 1,001 compared to 1,000. So this one does not make a big difference. So by having a one uh, ratio of RF to R1 plus number one does not make a big change. However, the the phase of the input and output will be the same. Okay, so here you, you have, so in other words, uh, the only difference between the equation of gain for inverting and non-inverting, the inverting amplifier have negative RF over R1, whereas for the non-inverting amplifier, you have 1 plus RF over R1. But this 1 does not make, uh, unless if the gain is small. If you have a gain less than 100, a few uh, gain, then this 1 will influence. Because if you have a gain of 13, for example, so 1 plus 13 is 14. Uh, but if you have a few thousand, this one does not change a lot in the ratio of the uh, RF to R1. Okay, for a unity follower, uh, unity means same value, lah, one, a factor of one, that is unity. Unity follower, most of the time we just uh, connect a wire up from the non-inverting to the output. So the feedback will be, this is common. You, you common the inverting terminal to the output terminal. 
and you apply V1 to the uh, non-inverting uh, input terminal. And VO will be actually the value of V1. Okay, and if you, you change to the uh, equivalent circuit, VI is equal to zero, VO will be this value. And V1 is actually VO because this is zero. So V1 is actually VO. And the gain is only one because VO over V1 is equal to one. Because V1 is itself is VO. So there will be no amplification and the output only follows its input. So that, that's why it is called unity follower. This circuit is useful for circuit isolation applications and also called a buffer circuit. It just used to hold the signal, uh, but the input will be the same as the output. Okay. Another use of buffer is uh, it's used as an input signal uh, can be provided to two separate outputs. The advantage of using this connection is that the load connected across one output has no or little effect on the other output. In effect, the outputs are buffered or isolated from each other. Okay, so a buffer or, or a unity flower is uh, all, always used to isolate uh, outputs from the inputs. Okay, such as you want to isolate V1 from V2. So you use a buffer circuit. But it does not affect the amplitude. But you want to separate, you want to split it. For example, here you want, you have one input, V1, but you want to split that input into two uh, two circuits. So you use an op-amp uh, using the connection of a unity follower. So, so that V1 can be uh, connected to a two input terminals of the next circuit. So you will have VO1, the same value of V1, VO2 also the same value of V1. But now the, the circuit becomes separated or isolated between each other. So that's an example of why you use the unity follower. Okay. Another application of OPAM is summing amplifier. Summing means from the word sum. Sum means you add up together. So a summer circuit, uh, a summing amplifier circuit, you will have many uh, values of inputs, V1, V2, V3, and so on. Each uh, V input is connected to one resistor and the same series, sorry, same parallel uh, voltage is connected to one input terminal. So in this case, you use a non, you use an inverting uh, input terminal, the V minus. You will connect V1 to R1, V2, R2, V3 to R3, and then you will have RF here between the VO and the input terminal. And this one, the equivalent circuit will be like this, where uh, each of it will have V1, V2, and V3. And one RF at the output. Okay, because the op-amp has a high input impedance, the multiple inputs are treated as separate inputs. And uh, current that pass through each of the resistors at the input will be different current. And these currents will sum up together to pass through the RF. So here I1 is actually V1 over R1. I2 is uh, V2 over R2. R3 will be V3 over R3. 
And this I, IF is actually equals to the total of I1 plus I2 plus I3. And VO is always negative IF times RF. So therefore, your VO is actually a negative uh, RF over R1 times V1 plus RF over R2 times V2 plus RF over R3 times V3. So you will see here a common uh, format. The gain for V1 will be RF times R1. The gain for V2 will be RF over R2. Okay, the gain for the, the other section at V3 is RF over R3. So each of these uh, parallel branch will have uh, amplification slightly different because the gain will be always RF over that section only. And then you multiply with the uh, uh, voltage input and you will total up to produce uh, VO. So therefore, VO is actually, this, this is called summing. You sum up part by part. You sum the V1 voltage due to V1 and R1, sum, uh, sum together with V2 voltage due to the uh, R2 and V2, and also due to R3 and V3. So the feedback is the same, RF. Each input adds a voltage to the output multiplied by its separate constant gain multiplier. So RF over the respective branch of the inputs will be the constant gain multipli multiplier for the respective input. Lah. Okay, most of the time we use a summing amplifier with a inverting manner. So you will have a negative in front. Okay, for an integrator, an integrator, uh, if for mathematic, mathematics, integrator is actually, you add up, isn't it? You add up and for an integrator, instead of using a resistor at the feedback, we use a capacitor at the feedback section. And since uh, here the connection, we still apply uh, V in at the inverting terminal, inverting input terminal. And the non-inverting input terminal is grounded. So therefore, uh, V V negative and V plus is the same value, it must be equals to zero. No current enters input of the op-amp, therefore your IR, I that pass to the resistor uh, from the V in, IR is equals to V in minus V over R. Uh, this one V in minus V uh, negative terminal because this total at uh, this section plus uh, V in minus zero. Okay, here you have V in minus zero divided by this one. And this is equals to V in over R. Okay. And however, I see, I that pass through the capacitor, I see is actually the capacitance multiplied with the derivatives of uh, the voltage drop, dV dt. So you, you will have C dV out minus V uh, negative and dT of it. So you will produce, uh, however, V negative is zero. So you will obtain the equation for the uh, current at the capacitor. IC is actually C times dV out dT. So this is the uh, derivatives capacitance times the, the uh, the derivatives of V out. Integrate. Okay. 
and IC plus IR must equal to zero. So if you have your input a square wave, uh, a square when you differentiate will produce a triangular. Okay, and C dV out over dt plus V in over R equals to zero and dV out is equals to negative one over RC. Uh, v in times dt and v out is actually one over negative one over rc integration of v in times dt plus v out at time zero so you will have a triangle so you, you now you are converting a, a square input voltage to a triangular output voltage so that is the job of a integrator conversion of waveform uh, in, from one form to another. The, the input signal is integrated at the output. Uh, it is used in low pass filter circuits and sensor conditioning circuits. Okay, so at the same time, when you have a capacitor here, uh, this gives you an integrator behavior. But it is actually uh, a low pass uh, filter. Okay. Uh, the integration operation is one of the summation, summing the area under a waveform or curve over a period of time. So if you take area under the curve uh, from one section to the next section, so if you divide into four sections, uh, you will have uh, from zero to one cycle here. One, you will have divided into four sections: T1, T2, T3. So the area from zero to T1 will be increasing, and at T2 higher than at T1. At T3 will be much higher, and at T4 will be the highest. So you will have the output is a linear increasing line. Okay, if you integrate at this section, uh, you will have zero value, so then you will drop. Okay, and okay, at DC value, capacitor becomes open circuit or no feedback. And for a op-amp integrator circuit, you connect a feedback resistor parallel to the capacitor at the feedback leg. So you feedback from VO to V in, you will have now R2 parallel with RC. Okay, and the, the output voltage will saturate to provide a closed loop gain at DC, an additional resistor is connected parallel to the capacitor. So you will have R2, uh, choose an R2 that is higher than R. So you must introduce R2 bigger than this R. That is common uh, even you want to have uh, differentiating amplifier, R feedback is always higher value of R at the input. Okay, and okay, the summing integrator, uh, you have a parallel uh, R to the input, but you have a capacitor here because this will give you an integration or integrator behavior. But now your V out will be integration of individual voltage and you, you sum them together because when you have parallel uh, the inputs to an uh, uh, to one input of the op-amp, it behaves as a summing uh, a, a summer and or what we call, uh, adder. Another term for summing inflation is also vot voltage adder because you add up. But now because of the capacitor present in the feedback loop, it becomes an integrator. So now you will have a summing integrator. 
Okay, now we move on to differentiator. For verb differentiator, you introduce a capacitor at the input side. And you have a, a resistor at the feedback side. And here, again, V plus uh, the uh, inverting input terminal of the op-amp is grounded. Uh, v minus is equals to V plus equals to zero. This is the rule for uh, op-amp. No current will enter the input terminals. So therefore, if you look, uh, current will pass through the upper uh, path. Okay, and IC is equals to C dV dt, which is equal to C dV v in minus v minus here divide by dt and because v in v negative is zero so you will get ic is actually c dv in over dt whereas ir ir is the voltage between v o and v minus here so you will have v o minus v minus which is actually VO only because V minus is zero because V plus here is zero. So therefore IR is VO over R. And IC plus IR is equal to zero. So now you will have a strangular V input will produce a rectangular V out. And V out is actually equals to negative RC times DV in DT. This is a differentiator. So the output signal is differentiated at the output. It is sensitive to noise due to the op-amp's high AC gain. But commonly, it is used as a high-pass filter circuit. Okay, that is a differentiate. So most of uh, high pass filters are at the same time, they are a differentiator. Okay, now multiple gain, multiple stage gain. So if you have a series of uh, inverting amplifier, like this example, here you will see this is actually an inverting amplifier because you connect uh, the, the input. Sorry, this is non-inverting. Uh, v, V1 is connected to the V+. Plus. But the second amplifier is a non, is an inverting. This one is non-inverting. This one is inverting because Input from input for the second stage is actually output from the first stage, right? And the second stage, we, we can call stage one or A1, second amplifier is two, A2, third amplifier is three, A3. So for a series, uh, of PEM circuit, the total amplification factor will be A is equals to gain of the first stage multiplied by the second gain multiplied by the third gain. So that's why you will have A equals to A1 times A2 times A3. Okay, where uh, A1 uh, non-inverting okay because you have a1 is 1 plus rf over r1 because formula for non inverting must always have 1 in front 1 plus rf over r1 a2 is because it is an inverting amplifier the gain will be rf over r2 but with a negative sign in front and the gain for the a3 is the same similar format for the A2, you will have RF over uh, negative R3, negative RF over R3. So you can multiply all together, but because this is negative, this is negative, 
the final product will be a positive number. Okay. Another multiple stage gain. Instead of connecting series, we can connect in parallel. This one is a parallel connection. You apply V in to this terminal and this V in is applied to the uh, negative F, uh, input terminal. This gives you inverting input, uh, inverting uh, amplifier. And this one is also inverting. Uh, all are inverting. Okay. And VO1 is not the same as VO2. Depends on uh, individual voltage. Here you will you use the same RF, but if R1, R2, and RT are different, the gain for individual uh, section will be different. A1 will be negative RF over R1, A2 is negative RF over R2, and A3 is negative RF over R3. Okay, so you must be careful with the formula. Okay, now if let's compare ideal versus real op amp. Uh, okay, in terms of voltage, an op amp uh, in the ideal situation, the voltage gain will be infinity. The input impedance will be infinity. The output impedance will be zero. The common mode voltage gain will be zero. However, in the real op amp, you will never get an infinity gain. You will have 10 to the power of 5 to around 10 to the power of 9. Most of the time, 10 to the power of 5 to 10 to the power of 6 or 7. And input impedance is infinity. For a BJT, the input impedance is smaller compared to the FET uh, op amp. If the op amp having an internal constructions from a BJT, the input impedance will be smaller. However, if you use an op amp that is uh, of base FET transistors inside them, uh, the input impedance will be much higher compared to a BJT based uh, op amp circuit. Okay, output impedance uh, and for ideal situation, output will be zero, but for a real op amp, output will be few kilo uh, ohms from 100 to about uh, 1k, one from bit, bit, around 1k lah, uh, output impedance there. The common mode gain. For ideal op amp, the common mode gain should be zero. However, in real op amp, you will have very small gain, 10 to the minus 5, which is 0 0.00001. 0 a very small gain. And if you have a small amount of uh, voltage difference between the common mode, then you will see uh, the common uh, the output for the uh, op amp in the actual operation. And another thing about the op amp, op amp is characteristics are dependent on temperature and the supply changes. So high temperature performance of the op amp is different from uh, cold temperature. So if very high uh, op amp is affected because because of the construction of the inner parts of the op-amp, which is from the transistor circuit. Because for PN junction, uh, remember, high temperature uh, electrons uh, move easier when uh, having high temperature. So that will create uh, a, a, what we call it uh, affinity or uh, ease of movement of the uh, electronics charges during high temperature. So that's why uh, if very cold, then the energy of the electrons flow 
uh, will be less. So temperature is a factor for characteristics and uh, behavior of uh, an op -amp. Okay. Okay. When we are working with uh, op -amp, we need to be aware of certain parameters such as DC offset parameters. So for an ideal op -amp, both uh, when both inputs are zero, the output voltage should be zero. However, for a real op -amp, there is a small voltage on DC at the output. And this scenario is called offset value. So it is called a DC offset. So the voltage offset occurs due to three, uh, three terms, uh, three factors, because the input bias voltage IIB, uh, input offset voltage VIO, and also input offset current IIO. These three values will influence the offset at the output, V offset. Okay, input bias current, voltage input output, and input up, offset current. So three factors affecting. For the input bias current, IIB, Okay, when we have two inputs terminal here, the uh, non-inverting and inverting, so there will be IIB positive and IIB negative. Theoretically, an op-amp should have an infinite input impedance and therefore no input current. In reality, however, there will be some small DC current flowing at the input terminals, but very small. Lah. And the average of the two input currents is called the input bias current. So you will have IIB plus uh, and IIB minus. Okay, input bias current is related to input offset current, IIO, where the relationship is that IIB, IIB plus, uh, sorry, IIB minus is actually IIB plus minus IIO divided by 2. And IIB plus is equals to IIB plus this IIO over 2. Okay, the total input bias current is the average of the two, where IIB is actually the average between this IIB plus and IIB minus. IIB may cause a voltage drop across the resistor of the feedback network, bias network, or source impedance. Typically, input bias currents in an FET type of PEMS, several pico farad, uh, pico amps, whereas uh, it is lower than that of the BJT because for a BJT, the bias current will be in nano ampere, whereas for a NFET, uh, in pico ampere. Pico means 10 to the power of negative 9, whereas nano is nano, nano 10, pico is to the power of negative 12, nano is 10 to the minus 9, so much smaller. Lah. FET must, must have a smaller amount of bias current compared to BJT. Okay. Now, uh, input offset voltage VIO. The op -amp output should be zero when the input is zero. Okay, here you will see uh, when we connect uh, an op -amp, uh, a differential op amp. Here you have RC and R1, RF. So VO is actually A times the difference between the input terminals and V plus is equals to VIO and V minus is equals to 
uh, R1 over R1 plus RF because uh, it is uh, inverting. Uh, non looks like a non inverting, right? We are, you have R1 over R2, R1, over, but it's the opposite. Eh? And VO is equals to A, you rearrange that, you will get A is equals to VIO minus VO times R1 over R1 plus RF. So therefore, you, re you rearrange this one, VIO, bring outside and rearrange the equation, you will produce VIO is actually A over A R1 over R1 plus RF. So actually, the offset is VIO R1 plus RF over R1. And the VIO is the amount of voltage that must be applied to one of the inputs to, z to zero the output. Okay, so here you will see uh, VIO ne negative here. And you will have V output is equal to 1 plus RF over R1. Okay, an example. Let's do an example calculation. Calc uh, you are given uh, a circuit of a PAM in this connection. So what, from here, what kind of connection is that? Your input signal is attached to the non uh, to the inverting terminal okay so this would be a an inverting amplifier lah because the positive input terminal is grounded and you have rf is equal to 150 kilo ohms r1 is 2 kilo ohms the op amp spec list with vio is 1.2 you are asked to calculate the output offset voltage. Okay. With uh, from the technical specification, VIO is equals to 1.2 millivolt. So now let's find V offset is equals to VIO times R1 plus RF over R1. You plug in VIO is 1.2, R1 is 2 kilo, RF is 150 divided by 2 kilo. You will obtain and insert the value of VO uh, offset and which is a value of 1.2 times uh, 2k plus 150 divided by 2k. You will obtain the offset is actually 91.2 millivolts. So in other words, you have to uh, introduce an offset of 91.2 millivolt to make it uh, go down to zero. Okay, now if, what would you do? Uh, how do you, how can you reduce output offset voltage? So you use offset null adjustment. Uh, you use the leg offset null input pins. And offset null is leg number one and leg number five for 741. But different op amp, you have to refer to the technical specification of the op-amp. Okay, and here, for example, uh, you want to reduce, you use, introduce offset null and you use a potentiometer, a tuner that you can control the offset null to adjust it. Okay, output offset voltage due to input offset current, IIO, Okay, because we are observing IIB, IIO, there are three elements already. So here, 
when you have connection R1, RC, RF, and you will have IIB minus to the input terminal, IIB plus to the non-input, non-inverting input terminal. If there is a difference between the DC bias currents, both inputs, then this also causes an output voltage, output offset voltage. The input offset current, IIO, is specified in the specifications for the op-amp. Okay, you have to obtain IIO from the uh, technical specification of the op-amp that you, you are using. Okay, so for example, IIB minus and IIB plus and VO plus is equals to IIB times RC because VO is IIB times 1 plus RF over R1. RF over R1 is the uh, inverting uh, amplifier and the O minus is IIB uh, times RI, uh, R1, but with a, this is not inverting, this is an inverting arrangement. So VO offset due to the IRB plus and IIB minus and equals to total of this. Uh, Total of VO, uh, the difference between VO plus and VO minus. So if you can subtract IIBRC times 1 over 1 plus RF over R1 minus IIBR1 RF over R1. Okay, and output offset voltage due to input offset current. Define the input offset current as oh, you here you have IIB uh, negative, IIB plus, uh, and here you have a DC. DC. You define uh, input offset current as IIO is actually the difference between IIB plus and IIB minus. And assume that R1 and RC is the same value and RF is far greater than R1. <coughs> so you will have the O offset equals to IIB plus times total of R1 plus RF minus I, I, B, minus times R, F. And I, uh, I plus, uh, I, B plus, times R, F, minus I, I, B, minus, R times I, I. So you will obtain, V offset is actually, R, F multiplied by the difference between I, I, B plus and I, I, B minus. So VO, VO offset due to IIO is actually IIO times RF. So total due to VIO and IIO, the op-amps may have an output offset voltage due to both factors of VIO and IIO. The total output offset voltage will be the sum of the uh, effects of both. So then you will have VO offset is actually VO offset due to VIO plus VO offset due to uh, IO. First, due to the voltage input offset. The second one is offset due to the current uh, offset input of uh, IIO is I input offset. Okay. Uh, specification, op-amp specification of frequency parameters, an op-amp is a high gain 
wide bandwidth amplifier and we use uh, logarithmic yuga and an op amp is a high gain wide bandwidth amplifier this operation tend to be unstable or it can oscillate due to positive feedback to ensure stable operation op amps are built with internal compensation circuitry which causes the very large or the very high open loop gain to diminish the increasing frequency this gain is referred to as the roll off in most op amp roll off occurs at a rate of 20 db per decade or 6 db per octave so these are the same values 20 db per decade is equivalent to 6 db per octave okay now uh, op amp specification uh, frequency parameters the specification of an op amp loop voltage gain uh, avd uh, voltage differential gain of an op amp is given by manufacturer again from the data sheet okay to reduce the voltage gain feedback resistors are connected to the op amp the gain can be called as closed loop voltage gain unlike okay now we have voltage gain closed loop which is acl okay unlike the open loop op amp configuration the addition of the feedback resistor to the op amp improves the op amp circuits by means of a four uh, modus of four ways improving the first is being improving the stability of the op amp voltage gain the second one increasing the input impedance number three is reduce the output impedance and improve the frequency response Okay. So this are uh, advantage of okay. okay. Now we move on to gain versus bandwidth. For open loop gain, which is AVD, the frequency of input signal increase, the AVD will drops off as it reach one or the unity gain bandwidth. We want in at the unity gain. Okay, so you will see a, a, a shape of uh, gain versus bandwidth. Here, the x axis is in frequency, the y axis in magnitude. And you will see cut off is always at 0 0.707 of the uh, AVD. Okay. We consider AVD is one. Uh, this one is uh, unity. Uh, and no more gain will be produced beyond F1. For the op amp 741, the B1 is about one hertz, one megahertz. Okay. B bandwidth very huge bandwidth for 741 slope this range will be fc or f1 minus fc divided by the distance ah. and say here is negative 7 point negative 0 0.707 is equivalent to uh, negative 3 db change per uh, db per decade lah. and how can you relate this plot with closed loop amplifier circuit example okay non inverting uh, related to the inverting op amp so you can find the answers lah. consider how you want to evaluate i think i have a few more slides and Gain versus bandwidth, another frequency of interest is at which the gain drop by 3 or 0 0.7 or 7 uh, voltage differential. This is the cut off frequency FC. The unity gain frequency and cut off frequency are related to F1 equals to AVD times FC.
Okay. For unity gain uh, amplifier, the output of each uh, op amp will be the same as the input. So it's actually it's not a big deal. Lah. Okay. And now slew rate. Uh, important factors about the op amp. A slew rate. What is actually the, the meaning of slew rate? Slew rate is actually the maximum the the, the maximum rate at which an op amp output can change in volts per millisecond. So slow rate is actually delta V O over delta T. And the T is always in microsecond, units of microsecond. If the slow rate, uh, if the rate of voltage change, which is the slow rate, the output would not be able to change fast enough and would not vary over the long range expected resulting in signal distortion and clipping. So low power of op-amps have a uh, slow rate that are less than one volt per microsecond. Okay, they have, uh, an example, slow rate for 741 is about 0 0.5 uh, volt per microsecond. So very small. High speed op-amp have um, slow rate of about 100 uh, volt per microsecond. Example, slow rate for uh, an op-amp LM6165, it has a slow rate of 300, micro, uh, 300 volt per microsecond. So this is a fast uh, response uh, op-amp with a slow rate of 100. You can see the difference. This one, if the slow rate, the slow rate is one volt per microsecond, it cannot reach a very high uh, value. Okay, that one volt per microsecond slow rate for a seven four one is only zero point five volt per microsecond. Whereas for a 741, uh, sorry, for a LM6165, the slew rate is much better, a uh, value of 300 volt per microsecond. Very fast changing. Because go back to the definition of slew rate, it is the maximum rate at which an op amp output can change in volts per millisecond. So in other words, slew rate is actually an indicator of performance of the uh, op amp itself. So if you want to use an op amp for high end, you use a op amp with slow rates, very high. Lah. Slow rate is also uh, listed in the specification sheets as the, my, uh, as the voltage per microsecond rating. Okay, maximum signal frequency. Maximal signal frequency is determined by the bandwidth and slew rate of, of op amp. Let's say we have sinusoidal signal, the O is equal to K sine to pi FT. The signal maximum rate is changed uh, uh, by a value of 2 pi FK volt per second. So to prevent distortion at the output, the rate of change must be less than the slew rate. So to determine the slew rate, uh, sorry, slew rate is, is uh, maximum signal maximum rate of change is given that to pi fk. So you want to obtain what is the value of f. The maximum frequency F is also limited by the unity gain bandwidth. So here F is, after you rearrange this formula, F is actually slew rate divided by 2 pi, v, 2 pi VP. An example, you are given a situation of how you want to calculate the slew rate. 
given that the slew rate of this op amp is 0 0.5 volt per microsecond. Here you have what kind of amplifier is this? Connected to inverting terminal. So this one should be an inverting amplifier. Okay, V in is 0 0.02. Omega is 300 and Omega is this, the ratio of slew rate over VP. And you have RF is 240, R1 is 10 key. So the gain is always uh, negative RF over R1. Uh, if you take magnitude only, it will be a positive number, which is 240 divided by 10 which gives you a 24 value. Okay. VP is equals to AVI. Okay. And it's equals to 24 times 0 0.02 volt, which is 0 0.48. So the Omega is actually the ratio of slew rate divided by VP. And you plug in slew rate given, which is 0 0.5 volt per microsecond, divided by uh, 0 0.48. Because v, uh, 0 0.48 is the calculated VPO. Okay, and you will obtain a value of Omega equals to 1.1 times 10 to the minus, uh, to the power of 6 radian per second. That is how fast uh, uh, change of pace of the signal. Because you have a slew rate of uh, 0.5 volt per microsecond. Okay. Uh, other ratings for OPAM found on specification sheets are absolute ratings, electrical characteristic performance. These are obtainable from a uh, data sheet of an individual OPAM. Each uh, uh, IC circuit must have uh, a specific uh, technical spec for them. So values that you are not familiar, you can refer to the uh, specification sheet for the respected uh, OPAM. Okay, absolute rot absolute rot uh, ratings such as the power supply, uh, allowable, internal power dissipations, differential input voltage, input voltage. So th those things are given in the data sheet or technical specification of the uh, specific OPAM. Uh. Okay, electrical characteristics. Okay, previously it was maximum rating. Okay, so for electrical characteristics, we consider uh, based on this table, uh, you, you must know VIO, 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 IIO, IIB. Uh, the, those are given. You, you do not have to uh, memorize that. Uh, these are actually from a data sheet. So given these parameters, uh, as an example to show you that what is shown in uh, technical spec of, of an OPAM. So here it says uh, maximum uh, 200. Okay. And They do not. They they often include minimum, maximum, and typical values. Common mode rejection ratio for this one is seventy, and typical is nine, and the unit is dB. So the the, the rightmost is indicated indication of the unit so that it's not crowded. Okay, and the the last slide. Open performance with voltage. Uh, 
Here we have uh, voltage gain is almost linear. Linear with supply voltage. Uh, supply voltage and power consumption is non-linear. And for frequency, certain range of frequency, the gain remains, but after certain uh, cutoff, the gain will increase. I'm sorry, uh, uh, the resistance. Output resistance is constant, low, low value here, 100 ohms. Eh? But then after it reaches certain level, it will shoot. But for input impedance, uh, input impedance is very high, but after certain level, it will drop. This is the behavior of OPAM or characteristic of OPAM. So very difficult to see uh, a linear uh, behavior. So these are also obtainable from the data sheet. So whenever you use uh, IC circuit, you must have access to the technical spec of that uh, particular IC in order for you to use. So please read uh, the technical spec, how to connect, what is the uh, values, uh, respected values, uh, offset null, uh, all other parameters. Uh. So that's all from me uh, for today. And uh, in next week class, uh, please join uh, a meeting link also uh, via Microsoft Teams, but an external link. Uh, I will post that link in uh, in the UKM folio and also Microsoft Teams message too, so that uh, next week uh, we will have an invited lecture from National Instruments. Uh, they are willing to share their uh, experience on dealing with uh, OPAM and application of OPAM in some of their projects uh, so that you students will be able to know how actually you can utilize OPAMs in simple projects. So uh, please do not miss next uh, week's class. Lah. Okay, and by the way, uh, for this, for my part, I will have uh, I will assign a project for students. Uh, I will post the project details. A project should be in groups. Uh, I, I follow the previous year's format. Uh, the task will be for students to do simulation studies uh, of using OPAM, uh, construct OPAM circuits based on different application of OPAMs and the project will be one report per group. So I will assign students uh, accordingly and some will get differential amplifier circuit, some will get uh, inverting, non-inverting and then uh, uh, filter circuit. Uh, so the one I will uh, update you all. Uh, so for this week, uh, save your energy for the phase test one. Okay, I will also have a phase test towards the end of my part later on. Maybe sometime in week eight, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe around week ten. Uh. Week ten. And the assignment will be later lah. Okay. So any questions on this uh, basic OPAMs? Guys, so let me stop sharing. No question, doctor. Okay, by the way, in the UKM folio, I have uploaded many short videos which I found good to understand uh, OPAMs basic OPAMs uh, behind how you connect 
open uh, in the non-inverting, in the inverting, and then uh, in the application of differential amplifier, uh, differentiator all, uh, summing circuit. So please view the short videos uh, from internet. Actually, from I just down, download and then upload in the UKM folio for students to view. Uh, the, the short videos are useful in simple ways. It explains uh, clearly. So I hope if you, you cannot understand, can, you cannot follow my explanation, you can listen and view the video, short videos. It will be helpful for you to understand how uh, OPAM circuits now is working. All right. Uh, if no questions, I shall leave you all. Okay, by the way, I, I also upload exercise. Okay, exercise, uh, last last chapter uh, for the frequency analysis, I, I put exercise four uh, for you all. I, I selected uh, questions from the textbook for you all to work on. So as a practice uh, to confirm your understanding of what has been uh, discussed or have been taught and you can do the exercise problems just to confirm your understanding of what to do lah and how you want to uh, do problem solving type of questions. Same thing uh, for this uh, OPAM, I have uh, upload exercise 5 for questions from chapter 10 from the textbook for you all to uh, to marks. There is no marks for that uh, exercises. It's just uh, uh, upload in the UKM folio for students to uh, practice, practice uh, doing problem solving. OK, so uh, is there a question? I sort of uh, heard someone. Uh, yes. Um, uh, sorry. Partner, like a partner or a group of people? Uh, the project? Yeah. Partner, partner. Last time I think I made uh, four people, something like that, in oh. a group. So uh, there will be, uh, I, I cannot remember, I, I think four people. So I will follow the in previous one group. in one group. But the project will be different. Uh. So some group will have similar tasks, maybe four or five groups, same circuits. Uh, but the approach you have to do uh, using uh, simulators uh, in order for you to construct the uh, circuit because we are still uh, online learning and we have to implement circuit testing by via uh, electronic circuits juga lah. Simulators lah. Alright. Um, and the, the grouping, I will just make at random. Alright. Uh, so that it will be fair. Yeah. Because if I ask student to group, nanti bergaduh pula. Orang ni nak berebut-rebut. So it's better okay. that I just pick names and uh, assign. Alright. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Any other question? So good luck for your um, uh, face test, face test one coming on Friday, uh, uh, night time. Eh? Okay. Uh, if no question, okay, I shall let you all go. Thank you guys for stay in the